Hey guys, today we will have a closer look at the new sequencer from Impromptu Modular Foundry. This video will be a sort of an introduction to this module, so we will go through all of its different sections and look at all of its features. Let's start! Okay, so here it is, Foundry, a four track sequencer packed with features. And actually, if you are familiar with the phrase sequencers, also from Impromptu, getting to know this sequencer will be pretty easy for you. And if you are not familiar with the phrase sequencers, you will find that Foundry is very intuitive and fun to use. The biggest difference between the phrase sequencers and foundry is how the sequences and the actual song mode are working, but we will start with a closer look at the sequences, then look at the song mode and how we can edit and control foundry with an external device. So as I said, foundry is a four track sequencer and each track has its own clock input and three CV outputs. The clock inputs are normaled to one another, which means that the last clock in line will drive all the sequencers after it, and you can see this also with the little arrows marked above each clock input. So if we have a clock connected only to the first track, it will drive all tracks together, and if we have one connected to the first input and one to the third input, the first clock will drive both first and second tracks, and the third clock will drive both the third and the fourth. We also have three CV outputs for each track, the main CV out, which will output pitch information as set in the sequence, we have also a gate output, which will output the respective gates, and we also have CV2 output, which will output additional voltage that can be used for all sorts of stuff like velocity, cutoff point, FM, and so on. Now, there are also three modes for the CV2 output, and this we can see in the right-click menu. The default mode is volts, which will output 0 to positive 10 volts, and we can change the settings in this section here. We can see the values and change them by turning the knob, so we go from 10 volts to 0 volts. And again in the right click menu, we can also choose to have a bipolar signal with a range of negative positive 5 volts, so red means negative and green means positive, we can see positive 5 to negative 5 volts. Now the second mode, 0 to 127, this mode will output voltage in MIDI-like levels, so 128 steps all in all, from 0 to 127. And the third mode, notes, will output voltage in steps of semitones, and we can see the note names on the screen. So let's build a small patch real quick and see this in action. Okay, so here we have an 8-step sequence programmed, and don't worry about setting up sequences, we will look at it shortly, but for now I want to concentrate on the clock inputs and the CV outputs. So we have here a clock that we will use for driving the sequencer, this one multiplied by 4. And as I mentioned before, all the clock inputs are normal, which means that the clock we are using is driving all 4 tracks of the sequencer. So let's add a voice, we will use the FM operator from Borg Audio. Let's send the first CV to the oscillator, to the volt per octave input of the oscillator, and also the gate. Let's activate the level envelope, lower the sustain level, also the attack time a bit so we have something nice and plucky. And here I have a reverb ready and let's have a listen to how this sounds like. Very nice. Now let's utilize the CV2 output and we will start by using its first mode, volts. So let's send it to the feedback amount CV input of the FM operator and open the attenuator a bit. And now we can go step by step and change the values. And for this we have to pay attention to the attach button. If it's on, the edit head will follow the sequence and we will not be able to edit it. But when it's off, we can go through the sequence and edit it step by step. So let's listen to what we are doing and change some of the CV2 values of a few steps. Let's say this one will go high. 
already we can hear the changes. Cool. Now we can also use this output to modulate the sustain level of the oscillator. So let's send it to the sustain input of the FM operator and raise the sustain all the way up. And let's change again a few of the values. So now we have even more movement in the sound. Okay, now let's look closer at all the different options we have for programming and editing sequences. Okay, so here we have again the FM operator and the first track is being clocked, but this time Foundry has no sequence programmed, so let's look at all what we need to know about programming and editing a sequence. We have up to 32 steps in a sequence and by using the length repeat button, we can change the length of the sequence, so let's click it once and change it to an 8 step sequence. By using the built-in keyboard we can set the notes for each step and we have a few options for this. We can go step by step and change the notes. So let's start with C and then go to E flat and G and B flat and so on. Or we can right click the note and move a step forward. So now I'm on B flat, I right click it and it jumps to the next step. So let's uh, say now C an octave higher and again E flat, again octave higher or we can even hold control and right click and the sequence will progress a step forward and will also copy the note. So now we are on E flat, I'm holding control on my keyboard, I'm right clicking, you can see the step jumped one uh, once forward but it's still on E flat so I can know which um, note I entered last. So now I want F for example, again control right click and then I want B flat again. So let's see how this sounds like. Very nice. Now we can also change the run mode by using this button here. And by turning this knob, we can choose between different um, modes. We have seven all in all. Forwards um, will run the sequence from left to right, like we've just heard. Then we have reverse. This will go from right to left. Then we have ping pong, which will alternate right and left, playing the first and last steps twice. And then we have Pendulum, which will also alternate right and left, but will play the first and last steps only once. Very nice. Then we have Brownian mode, which will move in Brownian motion once to the left, twice to the right, once more to the right, and so on. And then we have full random. And then the last mode is take A, which we will come back to later in the video when we look at the song mode. Now we can also transpose the sequence by clicking the transpose rotation button and turning the respective knob. So let's say transpose it 12 semitones upwards or downwards very nice and we can also rotate the sequence pushing it to the left or to the right so again twice on the uh, transposition rotation button and then by turning the knob we can push the sequence Very cool. 
Now we have a few options for changing the way the gates will react. We can turn off the gate of each step. So let's say I want no gate on step 3. So I just select step 3 and um, turn off its gate. Let's uh, make the same for step 7. And let's have a listen. Now you can hear that although the gate of this step is inactive, there is still a change in pitch and that's because of the decay time of the oscillator. So what we can do if you want to avoid this, we can tie a few steps together and avoid this behavior. So what we have to do, let's go to the steps. So this is the seventh step, there is no gate. I can also tie the steps so it will copy also the step the note of the step before it so this was step number seven let's go to step three and again tie the step and let's have a listen now we can also create a long held note if the sustain level of the oscillator is all the way up Very nice. Now there are two modes for this um, in the right click menu. We can choose to hold tied notes, which is on by default. And this will make sure that the gate of all the tied steps will stay high and will sustain the notes, just like we've heard now. And we can also turn this behavior off. So only the first step will have its gate high, but all the other steps will not be sustained. And for this to take effect, we will have to disable the tie function and enable it again. So let's have a look. I will turn this off. And let's go to the tight steps. Let's disable it and enable it again. You can see the gate has turned also off. Let's go to step seven and again do the same and let's have a listen. Very nice. So now let's look at the gate probability function. We can set a probability value for each step that will determine if a gate should be played or not. So we can add a touch of randomness to our sequence. And this we can do with the gate probability button. So let's choose step number five and add the probability to its gate. And we can see that we have the probability and values here and we can change them by turning the knob. So now we have 50% or the, this gate has 50% um, chance of going from its output or not. So let's turn this down to 24%. And if I want to go back and change the CV2 settings, I just have to click this button here. And now I'm in the CV2, one more click. And again, probability. Let's have a listen. So now there are 24, there is 24% chance that this gate will come actually out of the output, of the gate output. And with this we can add, of course, randomness to the sequence. Now we also have the possibility to add portamento or slide between different steps. And this we can do by using the slide um, rate button. And again, by changing the settings here, we can choose the rate of the slide. So let's add a slide in the first step. And also in the, let's say, th second step. Okay, now here we can change the rate of the slide. Let's, uh, let's uh, listen to this. Very cool. Now let's have a look at the gate modes. So we have the possibility to change the gate mode for each step. And for this, we will have to change the clock resolution. If you want to know more about the different gate modes, I will put a link in the description to a video I made about the different gate modes in the impromptu sequencers. But for now, let's have a quick look at how to set them up. And for this, we will have to change the clock resolution by clicking this button here and turning the respective knob. And for this, I will use a clock resolution of 12. So we have all the different gate modes. Now we also need to multiply our clock by 12. So this is the clock I'm using. Let's multiply it by 12. Very nice. 
And again, if you want to know more about this, check out the video. So let's change the gate modes for some of the steps. Let's go to step number one. And I can choose between entering notes or changing gate modes with this switch here. I just click it once. This is the different gate modes. And let's choose here a sort of a triplet. And let's go to the last step and add um, this gate mode here. And let's have a listen. Let's turn off the glide here. Can you hear this? Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so now let's move on to song mode. Okay, so let's first talk about what is song mode. Up until now, we looked at how to program a signal sequence, but Foundry is a four track sequencer with up to 64 sequences in each track, and each sequence can repeat itself up to 99 times. So you see why it's called song mode. We can build and create full songs with only one sequencer. Now, let's have a look at a diagram that shows how everything works together. So first of all, we edit step by step. This is the lowest resolution. We can change the note, add slide, change how the gate reacts, edit the second CV, and so on. Then we can edit the sequence. We can transpose the sequence, change its length, how it runs, and as I said before, we can have up to 64 sequences in each track. Now, after having a few sequences programmed, we can move on to song mode and start with editing a phrase, which means selecting the sequences we want to use and how many times they will repeat themselves. And after setting up phrases, we can build our song, selecting which phrase will start and which one will be at the end, and so on. So let's have a look at how to create phrases and then build a song. Here we have four different voices. We have the even three from Squinky Labs, which is actually three even VCOs from Befaco, and we have also the palm loop oscillator. All are going to the mixer, then to a filter and a reverb. I also have an ADSR module modulating the cutoff point of the filter. I have a clock driving the first track, and as we know from before, the clock inputs are normal, so all the tracks in this case will receive the same clock. Now I have on each track two four-step sequences programmed, and by using the plus and minus buttons here, we can switch between the different tracks, so we have track A, B, C, and D. Now I've created a four-note chord on each step, one note in each track, and I want to show you another new module that will help you visually know which note is in each step on all four tracks at once, and it's called For View. This one is also from Impromptu Modular, and let's put it in between the sequencer and our oscillators. And what it will do, it will show us um, which note is in each step on all four tracks at once. So what we will do, instead of sending the voltage or the pitch information directly to um, the oscillators, it will go first through four view, just like so, and then we can see the note that is correctly um, on the step. So let's do this for all four oscillators, and we can see exactly our chords. So now we see that we have on track one, on this step, this is the step number one, we have C4, then track two, we have D sharp, then we have G, and then we have A sharp. Now, actually, it's supposed to be um, E flat and B flat, so let's right click on four view and uh, uncheck the sharp, which means that it will be flat. So now we have, we can see C, E flat, G, and B flat, and it makes it really easy to see exactly which notes you have on each track all together at once in each and every step. So now we're on step number one. If I go to step number two, you can see the notes are changing. I can see which chord I have, step number three, and so on. Now I want that sequence number one will repeat itself three times and then move to sequence number two. So let's switch to song mode by using this switch here. And now we can start by setting our phrase. And this we will have to do to all tracks actually, and instead of going track by track, making the same changes, 
we have the all button which will select all tracks and we'll make sure that all the changes we make will be applied across all tracks. So let's click the all button and we can see there is a star next to the A. And phrase number one, here we can see the song phrase. Phrase number one will stay sequence number one, but I want it to repeat itself three times. So I will click the, the length repeat button. And we can see there's a small R here. So now we can choose it to repeat three times. Very nice. So now phrase one is set. Let's move to phrase number two. And phrase number two will uh, be sequence, will play sequence number two. And this will only play once. So now we have two phrases and let's set up the song. First of all, let's set the start and end phrase. We will go back to phrase number one. And again, this, those changes, everything what we do now will apply to all four tracks because we have all selected. And we can see that there is a sort of a U sign next to the number. This means that the song will start and end in phrase one. So what we want to do is set the end to phrase two. So let's go back to phrase two and set it to end in this phrase. Just click the end button. We have beginning and end. So I want the song to end on phrase two. And we can see that we have um, half of this U sign also on phrase two, and the first half is on phrase, uh, phrase one, which means that the song will start on phrase one and it will end on phrase two. And again, this will apply to all tracks because we have all selected. Now we can deselect it. And let's turn on attach so we can see the progression of the sequence. And let's have a listen. I will unmute this and start. So this is still phrase one, repeats the sequence number one three times. One more time. And now it moved to sequence number two or to phrase number two actually. which played only once, and now again it will repeat sequence one uh, three times. This is phrase number one. And again, we can see here all of our chords. One more time. And now phrase number two. Very, very cool. So now we have our song and you can go even deeper, create crazy sequences and put them together into songs, add randomness, combine the second CV output and more. Now one thing we have to keep in mind about Foundry, unlike the phrase sequencers, Foundry is all about the song mode. We don't really have individual sequences and what I mean by that is in order to listen to the result, you'll have to switch to song mode and set up your song. You will not be able to hear each sequence on its own in sequence mode. And let's see um, what I mean by that. So I will unmute, turn attach off, go to sequence mode. Very nice, and now I will run the song because I want to listen, for example, just to sequence number one, but no, this will play the song. This will not play the sequence. If I change now to sequence number two, you see nothing happens, three, four, Never mind what I do in sequence mode, it will not play the sequences, it will only play the song. In order to listen to what you're working on, you'll have to turn run off. And now you can go step by step and listen to the sequence you've created. So now I'm in sequence one, I can listen to step number one, step number two, three and four and so on. When I change to sequence two, you can hear Everything also changes with it, and I can go and edit my sequence. But if I want to listen to everything together, I have to switch to song mode and edit my song, and then I can listen to it. Now, another thing I want to show you is the last run mode, the take A. So let's say that we want our sequences to move randomly. Now, don't forget that we have four tracks in each sequence, so we will have to set them all on random. But when we do this, each track will move differently because they're set on random. And then we will lose the structure of our chords. 
So this is exactly why we have take A mode. We can set only track A to random and all the tracks that are set to take A mode will follow the steps of track A. So even though track A will move randomly, all the other tracks will follow it and we will keep the structure of our code. So let's have a look. Let's say that I wanted sequence one will run randomly. So I go select sequence one on track A, change the run mode to random. And now all I have to do is go to track B, change the run mode to take A, again the same on track um, C, take A, again on track D, take A, and what will happen now, um, uh, all the different tracks will follow track A, which is moving randomly, which means that never mind what uh, track A is doing, the um, our chords will stay together and will not lose their structure. So let's have a listen to this. See, it's moving randomly. But we still have this, the structure of our chords. Because we have um, a different chord on each of the steps, if one track will move randomly and all the other tracks will move in a different manner, we will lose the structure of our chord, but because we have the take A mode, they will follow um, track A, which is moving randomly and will keep the structure of our chords. Now two more things I want to show you before we move on. The first one is how to copy different segments of a sequence to another sequence or to another track and how to make changes to certain segments and this we can do by using the select button. We have three choices. We can select four notes or the next four steps. We can select the next eight steps or from the step we are on to the end of the sequence. Never mind where we are. We can select the until the end of the sequence. Also with 4 and 8 it will be like this. It will select always the next 4 or 8 notes. And now we can make global changes. So let's say I want those 8 notes to be transposed. So I just go to the transpose button and transpose just those 8 notes by a, an octave for example. Or let's say I want to copy them and paste them in a different track. So I hit the copy button. You can see it turned uh, green for a second. Then I go to track number C and I want to paste them here. So I click paste. Again, it's uh, green for a second. And now the, um, those notes that we selected have, um, has been, have been copied to track number C. Now, another thing I want to show you is the track delay function. Now, this is a bit tricky, but quite useful. Okay. So I have here an eight step sequence running and a bass drum on the beat. Let's have a listen. Very nice. Now I've changed the clock resolution of the sequence to four. This you can see um, here, because I wanted to change the gate modes of a couple of steps. And again, if you want to know more about the different gate modes, go check out the video in the description. And two things are important to keep in mind when it comes to the track delay function. First of all, it will only apply to tracks with a higher clock resolution than one. And the second thing to keep in mind is that the delay will only take effect after resetting the sequencer. Now, the delay function will delay the track by fractions of steps. So if now we have a clock resolution of four, delaying the track by one will delay it by a quarter note. Delaying the track by two will delay it by a half note and so on. So let's see how this takes effect. So let's unmute this. And let's change the, um, the first, the sequence. Let's delay it by one, which means a quarter note. And I re uh, reset everything so we can hear it. So now the sequence is delayed by a quarter note. We can delay it by two which means a half note, again reset, which is a nice effect. We can delay it by three, reset, 
And now if you delay it by four, it will just um, be delayed by one beat, but it will still be in sync with the bass drum. So let's have a listen to this. We can also delay it by 16, for example, and then we have four beats of the bass drum and just then the sequence will start. Let's listen to this again. So we can add delay to the sequence. Okay, so now let's move on and see how we can enter notes and control foundry with external devices like a MIDI keyboard or controller. So here I have the Beatstep Pro as my MIDI controller and let's see how we can control and program sequences with it. So first of all, let's open the expansion panel. And this we will do by right clicking the module and all the way down we have extra CVs. Now on this panel we have a few more options for controlling foundry and let's start with programming a sequence. I have here the cosmic oscillator from animated circuits and the MIDI 1 module. I will take its CV output and connect it to the CV input of the first track which is here track number or track A actually. Then I will take the gate output and connect it to the right input of foundry. Now this will make sure that with each note we enter, Foundry will write it in the sequences. Now we can also use the velocity output to enter velocity values on CV2 and this is in the expansion panel, again track A. And in this case I have velocity controlling the level of the oscillator but also modulating its sound. Now a few things to keep in mind, first of all, Foundry will write only on the selected track unless the all function is activated. So if I switch now to track B, you can see that the light next to the track has changed also in the CV in and also the CV to in. Now this means that only this track will be written on again unless the all um, function is active and will write on all tracks at once. Now we can also choose to write only to CV1, CV2 or to both by using this button here. So now we will write just to CV1 or the main CV. If I click it once more it will write just to CV2. You can see here there are no lights and when I click it another time both of them will be written on. So let's go back to track A and start entering a sequence. So here again I have my keyboard or something like a keyboard and I can start entering notes and again it will record or it will enter or write also the velocity settings. So let's see. And now we can play the sequence. So we have the notes recorded and also the velocity. Very nice. Now we also have an option in the right click menu to auto advance sequences when writing it's this one here, auto sec when writing. So when we reach the end of the sequence, it will advance to the next sequence in line. So let's activate this. Now we are on the last step of sequence one. If I enter another note, you can see it's uh, already on sequence number two. If I go again, let's say to the uh, third last step and I enter more notes, you can see it goes to sequence three and again, again to sequence four. Okay, so now we have a sequence, sequence number one. And let's see what else can we do. First of all, by using the auto step function or switch, we can choose to move one step forwards when entering a note or to stay on the same step. So now we, when I enter a note, you can see that the steps will move forward. If I turn this off, I will stay on the same step and I can choose exactly which note I want to enter until I'm satisfied with it. Now we can also move between steps by using the controller. For this I will use um, the triggers. 
I will go to control mode on the Bitstep Pro, and I have here the MIDI trigger module. I have those two assigned to those two pads, which means that I will take this output connected to the left arrow. This will move the steps to the left, and the other one will move the steps to the right. So I can go through the sequence, through the steps, without even looking at the screen. Very nice. Then we can also activate or deactivate the gate for different steps. And for this again, I will use the trigger module. So let's send the third trigger to the gate trigger input. And now this is assigned to this pad here. So if I go, I want this step to um, have no gate, I just trigger it and you can see the gate has turned off. Let's make this to a few more steps. So now I can also take off the gates without even looking at the screen. We can also tie steps together. This is the next um, trigger output to the tied trigger input. So let's go to this step. I want to tie this um, step together with the one before it and also this one here. Very nice. We can also add gate probability. So again, using a trigger from the MIDI controller to the gate probability input. Let's go to this step, for example, and add probability. You can see the light turned on. And again, to this one also, and to this one, for example. We can enter slides or portamento. Again, with the trigger um, module to the slide input. And then let's go to this step, add a slide, and to this here, add a slide. And here also, let's take also the rate a bit up, something like this. Let's have a listen shortly. So this is the step we entered live, without looking at the screen even. Now what we can also do is select different sequences or go um, uh, between the different tracks. And for this we have a few options. Let's start with the track actually, this is the easiest. I will use the MIDI CC module and I will send my controller to the track CV input and I have this assigned to this knob. So now when I, when I turn this knob, if you look at the track, you can see now it's on A, now it's on B, C and D and now we start with selecting all of them. So now we have all starting from A selected, starting from B, C, and so on. So we can go back to track A and change track with this knob here. And for changing the sequence, we have a few options actually. So we can use the same MIDI CC. And now by turning this knob, I will go through the different sequences. So now it's sequence one, two, three, four, and so on. But we have also other options in the right click menu. So we have it here, sequence CV in. Now it's on zero to 10 volts, which is what we've done now. We can also choose to use different notes, or if we have a keyboard and we want that each note will trigger a different sequence. So let's choose this, this option now. And I will go to my keyboard and now it will also enter notes, but this don't uh, concentrate on this. Let's concentrate on the sequence number. If I click this key, for example, I will have to switch the connection here to take it from the um, CVI output, the pitch uh, information. And now this key will be sequence 25, 26, 27, 28, and so on. I can also switch between the octaves and start from sequence one, two, three, and switch the sequences using my keyboard. And we also have another option, uh, option in the right click menu. We can choose to use uh, triggers so each time um, Foundry or this uh, sequence input will receive a trigger, it will move one sequence um, forward. So let's use again our trigger module and go to control mode. And this will be this um, button here. You see this pad here, when I click the pad, you can see the sequence is moving forwards one step, six, seven, eight, and so on. So you can build hold songs, hold sequences, and live change between them, switch between them, control um, foundry with your controller. It's really fun, it's really intuitive, and it's really good for live situations. 
Now you can also use the CV inputs to write sequences from a different module and I will put a link in the description to a video I made about recording the Turing machine with the phrase sequencer and it works the same with Foundry so if you find it interesting go check it out and now there is one more thing I want to show you the beautiful skins you can choose, we have three different skins to choose from, it really looks amazing, it's beautiful. And that was it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please hit the like button, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.